Hey guys, before I get started in this video, I know that I did a video TP4B packout video, kind of how I loaded up for lightweight work. The drill wasn't in it then, and it sometimes is, sometimes isn't. But everybody has these little clips on these veto bags. Oh, you can put a tape measure there, uh, hang a impact driver or something on it if you want. I shoved magnets behind mine so that I don't have to carry a parts dish or a little magnetic dish for screws. I can just throw them right on the front of that when I'm taking a unit apart. And uh, that's where I put my magnets. On with the video. What's going on, guys? I thought I would make a quick video for newer techs that are coming into the field. What, what tools they need to get, what they need to start out with, how deep they should go with spending and cost and brand name types of tools. All that's going to vary. First thing I want to tell you, if you're getting into heating and air conditioning, you got to remember one thing. It's your trade and your trade only. It's your skill and it's your ability. It doesn't belong to your employer. It belongs to you. The employer is now trusting you to carry on their standards of how they did the work. And a lot of the business owners that are hiring people are hiring people because they're ready to get out of the field, but they need to hire people. They're going to go out and represent their standard and their quality the same way they did. So it's your skill and ability, but at the same time, how seriously you take that is up to you. It's not up to your employer. So the biggest thing to remember is it's your skill and your ability, and you can take it as far as you want. And a lot of guys, I, the employer needs to buy me everything. No, they don't. Where I work, people coming in brand new that don't have their own things, we'll get them for them. We'll give them the complete, we're not going to buy veto bags. And we're not going to buy the most expensive field piece and fluke meters and things like that. But we're going to get you hand tools, we're going to get you gauges, we're going to get you the things that you need to do your job. But it's up to you and how serious that you take your your skill and your ability whether you invest in yourself moving forward with better quality better testing equipment things along those lines don't expect your employer is going to go out and buy you $700 field piece digital gauges or the digital wireless probes the most expensive flute meter and things like that they're going to get you what you need the basics to get you started to get you out there working but once you decide that's what you're going to do, it's up to you to determine how serious you're going to take it. Invest in yourself. You know, if somebody buys you a $5 nut driver that only does one thing, maybe down the road, you want to take some of your paycheck and go buy you a multi-use nut driver with different sizes, extensions, flip bits, things like that. So instead of going from a basic craftsman impact driver, that we're probably going to give you when you start maybe a year or two down the road you want to get yourself a milwaukee or a bosch or a dewalt something you know ryobi yeah okay and i'd put that about fourth on the list maybe five if you if you don't have a lot of money just kidding around. but it's kind of up to you to build your inventory of your tools and your meters and your equipment to carry the standard of quality that you have in your skill and your profession and your ability so this is going to be kind of a starter video things i think you need to look at when you get started first thing you don't need a bag you don't have to go out and buy a veto bag because when you buy your tools you got to have somewhere to store them you can't be walking around with them shoved in your pocket hanging out of your back pocket uh carrying them in a plastic trash bag or have you you know get you a good tech do you have to get one of these no you can go get you a cobalt bag from lowe's or a craftsman bag or a small bag to kind of get you started but as you grow and you experience things and you want to start adding better quality equipment you want a better bag to store that stuff in so you don't tear it up damage it and lose it that's why i eventually started using the veto bags they're convenient i've got three of them got four actually one that I don't use um, I've got a small bag 
my main bag and this was my original bag basically does everything this one does but for whatever reason I just decided I would kind of update that and go with one of these but you can pick up a bag at a, at a home improvement place Lowe's Home Depot things like that and then once you kind of start start to amass your better quality of tools in your inventory maybe you want a better quality of storage something more versatile that helps out has meter pockets things like that um, this is just something lightweight that I can grab real quick shot so so with all that said let's kind of get through a basic tool list that you're going to want to take pick up the basic things when you're getting started the simplest one is a good set of pliers just good old grab pull grab on something get a grip on it good set of pliers I keep a set of these not in one of my bags but as you can see these are worn they've been used they have a purpose good set of pliers you want a set of side cutters this is just getting started later you may invest invest in something that does two or three different things and all in one type of a deal cutting wire cutting large gauge wire good set of side cutters you don't have to get the most expensive when you're starting cobalt has these grab a set of those set of needle nose pliers get into a tight spot pull the wire taking something off of maybe a capacitor wire to test it uh, popping wires off contactors with stake on fittings reach back grab something pull it forward whatever you might use it for also they'll have a little wire cutter in there as well so it does serve two functions good set of needle nose pliers now, these are actually most of the original stuff I started with a long time ago maybe not the needle nose and the dikes but I mean I, this is kind of the stuff I had when I first started good set of channel locks prefer your flat edge channel locks they do have the grooved edges for the offset edges for like getting off large bolts and things like that but I like these you can get anything loose with them grab bend beat whatever you need good pair of channel locks you've got the smaller ones I keep those in they're over here you got these Irwin vice grip type and that's what I was talking about you've got your offset if you want to grab on a bolt or something so keep a smaller set in my bag if I need a bigger set I know where I can find them they're back in another storage container but some good vice grips insulated screwdrivers if you're reaching back to electrical connection once you put your fitting on there if it's energized you really want to make sure your power is always turned off when you're replacing contactors or, or tightening lugs in a disconnect box something along those lines but you don't want it to be energized from here all the way back to here because if you touch something uh, you just it happens sometimes if you touch something you don't want to blow a break or blow a fuse short something out maybe a control board something along those lines so you want something insulated you can get these these are south wires i have those i have some linux or you can go get one of these from home depot it's a flat and it's a phillips reversible insulated this would be something you would kind of upgrade to down the road where you can go ahead and get one they're just not quite as long and they're just basically your smaller sizes so if you need a larger size you might have to have a different screwdriver but a good insulated screwdriver is something you want to have a beater screwdriver this is a husky i also have a craftsman i'm not going to spend a lot of money on a milwaukee that costs two or three times as much and it's got the metal cap on the back with the solid shaft through the middle these things work very well 
and because you're going to be using it to pry and beat on things most of the time no reason to spend a lot of money on that get something inexpensive heavy solid that'll do the job good beater screwdriver good phillips head screwdriver small medium large this is a large one used to use this one to just kind of pop holes in plenums to wring them out open them up get my cutters in there my sheet metal snips to make a hole good phillips screwdriver set of nut drivers this is a quarter inch nut driver i cannot find my 5 16 but i really don't use these anymore because i typically will now use one of the many universal nut drivers i have basically get you if you want to invest in that get you one of these malco flip bit handles you can take that out you can put anything in there you want but i keep a flip bit on it quarter inch five sixteenths so instead of having to carry two separate nut drivers i just carry one that does both jobs five sixteenths quarter inch and i also have the three eighths and the larger flip bits that i can use and i have one there i have one in this bag a little bit shorter shank on it if i need to reach that's when you want to invest in extensions maybe you get you an extension you can pop that in there then stick that in there then you can reach in a little further if you need to and by all means if it's that far back i keep one more extension so i can pretty much reach back as far as i need in most situations very rarely do i have to do that I prefer these DeWalt extensions because they have a little narrower barrel. These that have the fatter barrel on them, sometimes it's hard to squeeze them back in a tight spot. So these little DeWalts are about $9 a piece at Lowe's. But with that said, having an extension is definitely something you want to invest in. You might want to go ahead and buy two. So those with the types of nut drivers that I carry. Sheet metal snips. Some green and red. Right angle, left angle. So, but you need some snips because from time to time you're going to have to cut some sheet metal out of the way. Panduit strap. Get you a panduit gun. You're going to go into a house and you're going to find a piece of duct work that's come off. A collar it's come come off the boot maybe it's come off the the plant i'm disconnected trim off the, the torn worn out hopefully you've got enough slack in it you can reach back and reattach it but you're going to need a panduit gun to reattach a lot of duct work if you're going to need a tape measure you don't have to have an expensive tape measure five six dollar tape measure that's all you need i do have a Every bag that I have has one of these little six foot Milwaukee's on it. it. Usually does most of what I need. If I need to measure something longer, I have this on the truck. I can go back and grab it. But a good tape measure, definitely something you'll need. PVC cutters. Keep a set in this bag. There's different styles. These are kind of a backup set. I, I found them to be a little irritating. These cheap plastic ones that you can get at the supply houses, you can't beat them. I mean, it, if it breaks, you didn't spend a lot of money on it, but I've had these for a while. They work just fine. I do have the ratcheting style in another bag. There's a backup set, but they're a little fat. They're a little large. So the ratcheting PVC cutters trying to keep them in a bag or keep them stored these things are kind of sleek and narrow they fit in a the pocket they kind of fit in a small spot the ratcheting ones are like real large they're fat so trying to slide them in a bag can sometimes be a problem thermostat screwdriver just getting started free of charge go to your local supplier 
they will usually give them to you for free. They usually keep them behind the counter in a box. It's your Phillips, your flathead, and it's got a Schrader core tightener on the back if you need to kind of back a Schrader core out that's leaking, kind of snug it, fit it back down. Something you can get for free. And at some point, maybe you get a Klein multi-tool with your quarter inch fat 5 sixteenths. It's going to come with a Phillips and flathead bit. And then the other side will come with a small thermostat flathead, not a Phillips, just a flat. And a Schrader core tightener in that. So to get you by, one of these will do the job just fine. Or maybe down the road, you get one of these with the twist barrel against your palm with your micro screwdrivers in it so just options that you would have down the road but the basics go by your parts house get you one for free you're working on gas line pipe wrenches you're going to need a well, this one's a 12 and a 14 I've had these two pipe wrenches since about uh, 2002 or three. The only two I keep. I'm not going out getting fancy pipe wrenches. These are heavy. They work. They have never failed. You can beat with these things. You can break any pipe apart. No reason to go out and spend $50 on fancy uh, name brand. And I'll stay away from the names, but when you're getting started, get a set of these, and they'll probably be the only ones you ever buy. These are Task Force pipe wrenches. That's all you're going to need. You get a set of those, you'll be fine dealing with gas pipe and gas lines in the service side of things anyway. Maybe you need to, at some point, cut a hole in a plenum, get you a hole cutter for your drill. You'll drill that hole in, put your drill on here, kind of set your tap in the hole you drilled. You're going to slide this down based on the size duct that you're trying to cut an opening for. Spin that thing around, cut that hole, and you won't have to use these. <coughs> these can cut you and damage you real fast if you don't use them right. If you slip, cut yourself. These work good. Get you a set of duck hole cutters. And back to these. I have some good gloves. I have several different types of gloves I wear. Different pairs. Probably about four or five. Um, these are some of the basic ones. Just to kind of protect my hands from nicks and cuts. A lot of the times you'll see me wearing these. Because they're fingerless. And I like to have. I like to be able to kind of feel what I'm working on. So I'll wear the fingerless gloves. If I'm jerking something apart pulling out a heat exchanger or something like that uh, depending on the type of the unit and the clearance I've got if I think I'm going to get cut up I'll wear a full set of gloves but typically the fingerless ones are the ones I use most of the time duck knife I have a Milwaukee duck knife if you're going to splice in and reconnect and uh, work on duck work flex duck you need a good duck knife I bought the Milwaukee one, but I also have a less expensive one I got from the supply house, and it works just just as well. I probably just bought that because I saw it and thought, eh, let me get that. But you need a good duck knife. Anytime you're working on flex duck work, <laughs> if you're working on duck board, you can just pull out your butter knife out of your kitchen drawer, and you can cut that up. But you need a good duck knife. You're not going to use it a lot. And don't, you know, use it to cut mastic tape, things like that. But primarily cutting through some flex duct, making a good even cut, making sure everything's smooth so you can put your splice collar in. You got a 15-foot run of duct, but it comes in a 25-foot length bag most of the time. You don't need all 25 feet, so you're going to have to cut off that excess. You're going to need a duct knife to do that. Allen wrenches. You can get these, and they're okay, but 
this handle gets in the way a lot trying to get in there and spin it's a good backup version to have i prefer getting the individual which i keep them in this bag where you can just take out the size you need and use it it makes it a little narrower easier to work with they make long and short i keep the short ones i also have a bit set that are allen keys as well that i can put on an extension put on a handle and use if i need to but getting started this is going to be all you need wire strippers they make basic wire strippers most everything I have for a wire stripper is going to be a set of these Milwaukee's because they're strippers they're needle nose pliers this is one of the all-in-one tool type things I was talking about and they're cutters primarily for what I use them for so a good set of wire strippers I've got a set in that bag and another set in this one so I've got three pair of those Milwaukee's a scratch off I use that to line up holes. Maybe you've got overlapping panels, you're trying to get the screw holes to line up, you stick that in there, grab each one of those holes, press down, put your screw in, uh, making a dent or an impression in something to get a screw started. These things come in handy. A good adjustable wrench. So I keep different types of adjustable wrenches I have these DeWalt adjustable wrenches small medium and large I have all sizes they're not all here but you're going to want a large set a medium set and a small a small pair medium pair large pair I once you decide to start investing in better tools I end up getting this channel locks code blue because that thing opens up really wide fits most everything you're going to deal with and it also has the narrow jaws to get behind TXV bolts and lock-ons and fittings. So, you're going to need some adjustable wrenches, some medium ones, some large ones. You can also have the Knipex pliers wrenches, but, I mean, this thing alone was $30. Or you can get a set of these for about the same price with your small, medium, and large. So down the road, getting something like this, as you move further into your career, you decide you're gonna do it, something like that. But until then, a good set of adjustable wrenches will do you just fine. Refrigerant wrench, you're gonna need to get one of those. Everybody knows what that's for. If you don't, you'll know when you get started. Liquid line, suction line valves on outdoor units. Closing them. If you're going to pump down a system, uh, you're on a startup, you got to pull a vacuum on the coil and the line set, open the valve to release the charge in the outdoor unit. So there's uses for that. This fitting also fits the gas valve, taps on a lot of the gas valves. And you can also use this on your lock screws and your lock keys for your blower wheels and your fan motor fans on your fan blades on your outdoor units so there are uses for it primarily it's a refrigerant wrench a 90 degree offset tool you're going to want to have something like that get back in a tight spot if you can't get a driver or something in you're trying to reach back and get to something that's real narrow back there you can't fit a big maybe a stubby won't even fit back there or if you get the stubby back there it's too much you can't get your hand back there to operate it get you one of these put your bit in there go back there on your screw put your drill or your hand nut driver I can put one of these handles on it open that thing back start to break that screw free maybe you can reach in with your fingers after that and get it all the way off a uh, good knife, razor blades, you've got cobalts, they're fairly inexpensive, a set of those, or you can get the Milwaukee Fastback, get one of those, it doesn't always lock into place, it's got storage for extra blades in there, I think I got two of these in a pack for 
fourteen dollars you can get the individual cobalt for ten if you just want to get one when you're starting out but i have like four or five different types of blades another thing back to the thermostat screwdrivers you can get these at lowe's on their website their craftsman's got these i can't remember where i picked up this one at but they both are the same thing micro screwdrivers phillips flathead there cap on the end cap off that end a little bit larger flathead and phillips these are just little tools that make you don't have to have that just makes life a little bit easier sometimes and we'll go through some other have some spare bits for your drill and we're going to get into that stuff here in a minute this video is getting a little long have some spare bits chucks 5 16 quarter inch because you're going to lose one you want to have some type of a fuse testing device i made this i have the um, short pro tool with the light in it and i have the fuse popper and i also have one of these i just made this out of wire some stake on fittings and then a three amp resettable fuse so sometimes you can be resourceful and save yourself a little bit of money sometimes you just see things and you want to buy them just to buy them but uh, a brush you're going to want to have a brush in your bag dust out electrical compartments tape it up so you don't short anything dust out get cobwebs spiders bugs things like that especially in outdoor units you're trying to get in there and look around a good brush maybe you get an inspection mirror i have that one i have one in this bag and i do not yet yeah, i got a small one in this bag temperature probes field piece makes two different types of temperature probes check your return temperature supply temperatures checking your temperature split You've got those I'm kind of partial to the UEI because it's shorter to me takes up and this one folds back to I guess they're all kind of compact in their own way I like this one because it has the magnetic strips on the back so I can stick that in a plenum and just push it to it and the magnet holds it I can turn it however I want to look at it but a good temperature probe now we're going to get into power tools hand tools I think you've got the idea on that power tools real quick sometimes you can get a combo set this is I've had this Hitachi probably 15 years and I used it forever then I eventually got a Bosch something a little smaller to fit in these bags which is the whole reason I bought that you notice how much faster so there was an adjustment period going to the Bosch now that's with a full battery on it I like the light in the end of it and I found something in the Milwaukee it's kind of got the speed that the Hitachi has but these are expensive inexpensive that's what you're going to want to start with and I recommend you get a combo kit something that's going to come with maybe get you a craftsman to begin with it comes with the impact driver and the drill because you're going to need both you usually can get those combat combo kits fairly cheap or inexpensive or about the same price you'd pay for an individual one of these a sawzall you don't need one of the big sawzalls where you think you're going to be cutting somebody's house down if you need to cut through something cut a motor shaft off on the universal motor um, cut through some metal um, cut a piece of wood out of the way a small one I do have a large one don't use it that often one of these little small sawzalls comes in really handy now these are things you'll buy down the road an oscillating tool maybe you need to 
cut some sheetrock out of the way instead of getting a duck uh, sheetrock saw and making a mess. These are really handy if you need to make a little square and some sheetrock. A um, number of other things. I got the Bosch because it was on sale for $79. And make sure when you're buying, like especially a combo kit, get something that's going to have multiple batteries. It's going to come with a charger. Um, when I got my Milwaukee set, it came with the drill, the impact, two 2 amp batteries, and a 4 amp battery plus the charger. So getting the combo kits saves you some money in the long run. Gauges. I'm going to cover gauges real quick. Get you a manometer. You're going to need a manometer. Checking static pressure, setting your gas pressures. I have the field piece wireless ones in here and I also have I use the UEI manometer that's always worked for me but I have a field piece as well but you're gonna need a manometer for checking gas pressure static pressure on a duct system also at some point I'm gonna check airflow and supplies and registers and return grills I use the little UEI or the little testo I can connect that to my app on my phone. They make handhelds that have a display on it that will give you that information as well. But vein anemometer, you want to check airflow, coming through some registers and some returns. Maybe at some point you want to get a mega ohm meter to check compressors. Troubleshooting. X13 and 16 pin ECM motors. Comes with the different adapters depending on the motor you're testing. Those things help out. And these are things you'll buy later on as you want to get better and continue to kind of invest in what you're doing. A good set of uh, sockets. Maybe some extensions, some handles. This is kind of the one I use primarily. It's got different sizes in there, adapters. But you want to get something with sockets. Helps you with sockets. Not going to be something you're going to use every day, but eventually you will need it. A digital psychrometer. If you need to check humidity, wet bulb, dew point, things like that. A good digital psychrometer is also going to be something you're going to want to invest in at some point. Lights. Good flashlights. I prefer rechargeable. You can also get the battery operated lights. A good headlamp. That's a cobalt headlamp. It has batteries in it. It's more of a backup. $13, $12 you can get one of these. I also have two of the Milwaukee actually three the Milwaukee rechargeable headlamps they're now they're about 40 or 50 dollars depending on which one you get but the money you spend in batteries in the long run on one of these which is always going to have to have new batteries put in it will eventually build up go ahead and invest that money and get you a good solid rechargeable headlamp and then you're not going to have to worry about it. you got to remember to charge it but you don't have to worry about all the money in batteries this one is magnetic, so if I've got it and I'm wearing it, maybe I want to take it off my head, stick it up in a cabinet, I can do that. It's got the magnet on the back, turn it whichever way I want. Good flood type light. Put your hat out here somewhere, there we go. I've got three of these things now. It's got a strong magnet on the back of it. Right there on the bottom. And I can turn this and stick this up in a cabinet, put it on a disconnect box in the crawl space, whatever I'm doing. If I'm outside after the sun has gone down, I can stick it on the disconnect box out there. And then I can just light up what I'm working on, see what I'm doing. So a good universal type floodlight that you can adjust, turn, spin. Look at what you're working on when it's dark. Keeps your hands free. You're not holding a light and then trying to do something else with your other hand. So that's kind of where good lights come into play. Gauges real quick. 
got a set of gauges these are probably you know starting out primarily what you're going to see is r22 and 410a most of the time obviously a good temperature clamp that you can connect to your meter which that's the last thing i'm going to do after the gauges and we'll be done but probably need to start preparing to get digital gauges now because these only do a couple of refrigerants that you're going to see and with the changes that are coming forward with the new a2l refrigerants everybody else is going to one leave it to goodman and slash dykin to live in their own world so probably having a good set of digital gauges you don't have to get the most expensive field pieces that are out there with the wireless handles i've got the job link probes that i use primarily these are more for recovery and uh, just certain situations but you're going to need a good set maybe you can find an older set somewhere these were the original versions these are only about seven years old these are the four ports and the vacuum hose these are just the three ports i use an appion vacuum system one hose half inch hose where i pull my vacuums i don't use the gauges too much anymore to that but because of the digital gauges having all the refrigerants listed in it when you're checking superheat subcooling and they've got all those refrigerant charts built into the program that's probably something you're going to want to invest in pretty quickly if you can a lot of companies will have tool um, allowances where maybe you can get something like this and they'll take a little bit of money out of your paycheck every week to, to pay back for it but unfortunately the analog gauges are going to limit you you're going to have to have several different set to cover sets to cover all your refrigerants get a set of these and you'll pretty much be where you need to be on that and maybe at some point you need to have a second backup set because they are electronic they've got batteries in them uh, things things quit working so having digital gauges for r22 and 410a um are good but an old analog set or an they still make them you can still get them and they're a quarter of the price you know but those digital gauges i just showed you are anywhere from you know 450 500 600 dollars and then you got to buy hoses to go on them as well because they don't include them you can get the analog gauges they come with the hoses but you'd have to find several different sets of those to cover all the refrigerants you're going to be dealing with in about two or three years meters 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 a good inexpensive meter when you're getting started get you a uei those are about 150 140 50 you can get the cheaper 170 80 dollars at lowe's but they're not going to do everything you need for hvac so good this uei meter i've had this for about seven years this is the dl 389 does volts ac dc ohms continuity microfarads you've got your micro amps i can go ahead and check uh flame sensor readings you've got your temperature that you can put on here pretty inexpensive meter does most of what you're going to need for your troubleshooting i also have your piece 480 they are less expensive fill pieces that you can get but this does pretty much everything you're going to need something you would upgrade to down the road you don't have to buy it to begin with it does your temperatures non-contact -con voltage amps continuity capacitors hertz ac dc volts amps check con uh, your flame sensors on this one you can do phase rotation on this one as well you can do watts if you're trying to check your heat strips see what kind of watt is there but di different things read the books on these meters they all do a lot of stuff keep a fluke in this bag it's just a smaller it's the 324 plus
volts AC and DC, ohms, continuity, capacitors, temperature, and amps. Got a backlight on it. It's a small compact meter. It's an expensive one. It's about 200. And, it's not their most expensive. It's just it's about 300, about 220 dollars. I think this one was. But uh, it's small. It's slim. It doesn't come with a magnet on it, so I had to gorilla glue a magnet on the back. Other than that, some fine point needle probes as well. You want a set of those. to go with your meters for your leads for getting into Molex plugs and little small connectors on circuit boards places where these leads are a little too fat and too large to get into so those are some ideas you need to look at with meters that UEI Phoenix is a very versatile meter you can get needle probes for it and you can get it all with the kit and everything for for well under two hundred dollars so that's probably something I would start out with in the beginning. So guys, this is just kind of a rough idea. And there's a lot of stuff, knee pads. You're definitely going to be doing some crawling. Get you some good knee pads. And you're going to tear them up. So don't go about buy a $50, $60 pair of knee pads. You know, get the 20 or 30s. Get something, you know, try them on, check them. I got these knee pads on Amazon I go through about two pair a year $25 a pair and I, I got as much because I'm more in a supervisory role than a six seven service call a day role now um, for the last several years but I keep good knee pads because I had knee surgery last year it just takes one rock in one crawl space to screw your knee up royally so have good knee pads I got these at the military surplus store for $15 a pair they're just military knee pads and I've done about three pair of these and I keep the other ones stored away but some good knee pads they don't have to be expensive but protect your knees definitely protect your knees they go kind of hand in hand with the gloves. So, good set of knee pads, but you can get pads like this at the military surplus store. Or you can order some of these on Amazon. Don't go buy the don't go to Lowe's and buy the 15 or the $45 gel knee pads. Yeah, they feel okay for about a week, but they want the Velcro wears out on them. They're sliding around your leg. They fall off halfway through the crawl space. You know, and also definitely around the outdoor units if you don't, don't want to wear your knee pads they buy you one of these you get one of these at Home Depot cobalt version at Lowe's the Husky at Home Depot I like the Husky because it's basically the same price but it's about two inches wider and two inches deeper a little bit larger something to kneel down on just throw it down by the outdoor unit you don't have to worry about putting your knee pads on anyway guys just ideas for new technicians things you might want to invest in looking forward but remember it's your career it's your skill it's your trade and you're only going to be as good at it depending on how serious you take it and don't expect your employer to do and buy everything for you because there's only one person that can make you smart and that's you so invest in your career and remember it always belongs to you and no one else anyway guys appreciate you watching got a lot of stuff here and for you guys getting started if you end up taking your career seriously and staying in this you're going to end up with this exact same problem you just go around buying tools you're a junkie and but it makes you crimpers, miss crimpers. You got to get a good set of crimpers, man. Good set of crimpers. Make sure you get some crimpers. They've got the cutters on the tip. And they crimp. And they're wide enough, not the skinny ones. But they make a good, full, complete crimp. Good set of crimpers. Didn't have time to cover everything. But I think you've got the general idea.
invest in your career, invest in your trade, and everything else will just fall into place. Like, subscribe, appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.